Welcome to today's special vFlyer webinar, Getting Your Website Ducks in a Row. Uh, we're going to talk all about how to approach building your website and how to make that uh, really uh, pretty easy. My name is Dan Lenahan. I'm the Marketing and Training Manager at vFlyer. I lead a lot of our webinars, and I'll be leading today's. This is the first Getting Your Website Ducks in a Row webinar that we've done. So I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. And uh, just, again, thanks for joining us today. We're going to wait another minute or so before people, uh, or to let other people join in. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just mention that I, of course, have you all on mute. I'll leave you on mute during the duration of today's webinar. That's going to reduce background noise and just make things go a little more smoothly. I do still want you to ask questions, though. That's really what this and all the webinars that we do uh, is, is all about. Uh, so if you have questions, you can type them into the questions field in your GoToWebinar control panel. And I'll get all the questions that are sent in, and I'll try and answer them as they come in. If I miss any, uh, we'll be sure to do a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So definitely send in your questions. Also, if you're having any issues uh, with seeing my screen or any audio issues, definitely let me know. Just, again, type in a message in that questions field. And to anyone who just joined in, welcome. This is Getting Your Website Ducks in a Row. My name is Dan Lenahan. And in today's webinar, uh, this is actually a companion webinar to the website planning guide that we created and shared with all of our users last month. So um, we're going to be talking about uh, some ways to approach building your website that will hopefully make that task uh, easier and, and go more smoothly. Um, now, I'll, I'll give you some context for, um, I guess, why we decided to create a website planning guide in the first place and do this particular webinar. Um, in talking to a lot of site creators since we launched vFlyer sites last year, uh, particularly people creating their first site, we found that there was typically a moment of inspiration where they say, that's it. I'm going to build my own website. I'm not going to hire anyone to do that. No designer, no webmaster. I'm doing it myself. And it's really exciting and empowering. And they find uh, a service or a program to build their website like the Flyer Sites. And, uh, and then they build their website. And that's great. And it's easy. And that, for, for some of the users we found, uh, that was followed by um, the task actually of actually building the website seeming a lot more daunting. So, in other words, uh, they have the moment of inspiration, they build the site, and then they think to themselves, you know, I don't have uh, the, the foggiest idea of how to actually build this site. I'm, I'm totally at a loss. And so that's what we were finding with a lot of, again, especially first-time site creators. And we found that usually the reason for this was that they didn't know what to put on their site. Uh, or if they did, they didn't have the content or know how to get the content to put on their site. So again, that's, that was sort of the genesis of the idea of the website planning guide and of this webinar. It's to help people identify what content to put on their site and then to help them collect and organize that content. And in doing so, uh, the task of building a website becomes uh, a lot more doable, or, or at least seems a lot more doable. So that's, again, just some context, excuse me, context uh, for why we're putting on this webinar. And uh, I should have mentioned this before, but um, you were all sent a, uh, a link to the website planning guide that I, that I keep talking about um, in a couple of emails. If you don't have that, um, you just you can email support at vflyer.com after the webinar or during the webinar, and we can send you the, the link to that website planning guide. But we're going to go over um, the, the whole contents of that guide in today's webinar, hopefully in a more kind of digestible and hopefully enjoyable format. So like any project, when you're building a website, it helps to have a plan. That's going to make the whole process of building the site go a lot more smoothly and be a lot easier. So in your website plan, you want to think about your website outline, 
how's your website going to be structured, uh, what are the different pages that you're going to have. And in doing that, you want to think about what text you want to show on your website, what images you want to show, uh, if there's any other media, like videos or audio that you want to show on your site, um, as well as the functionality, what your site does and how people can interact with it. And then finally, the design, how the site looks. So it's important to think about all of these things um, either before you start building the site or soon after you built the site. And this wasn't included in the website planning guide. So if any of you have read through that guide, you, you wouldn't have seen this. But I find, at least when I'm building a website, I find that it really helps to first sketch it out on paper. Um, and, and considering that I work for a tech company, I'm actually um, not all that technical. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to say. But I always like to start out on paper. So pull out my legal pad and just sketch out how I want my home page to look. And I find that that really helps me um, get a better idea of how I'll, I'll build that site. So once I have the, the picture um, drawn, I can then go ahead and, and more easily start adding content to the, to the site. And as I noted here and as the, this drawing shows, the drawing doesn't need to be pretty. Um, again, it's just a quick sketch to give you a better sense of how you want to structure your website or a, a certain page on your site. Now, it's also important in thinking about how to build your site and what content to put on it, it's important to sort of see your site through the eyes of your prospective customers who are going to be looking at the site. And you want to think about what questions they're going to be asking themselves when they get to your site. And so we identified five questions that a website visitor uh, will typically ask about a site, whether it's a site selling a certain product or offering a certain service. These questions, um, they carry across all different kinds of sites. So the first question is, does this firm offer the products and or services that I'm seeking? Pretty basic question. And we tried to identify for, for each of these questions, there are five questions again that we identified, um, we tried to identify what content um, could address that question. So in the case of this question, content that can address it uh, includes a slogan, because often a slogan tells someone what your company is all about, what you do, what makes you unique, what you, what, what value you offer. So slogan is important. Um, photos of your products and or services. So you want to show people what it is you do through photos or, or other images. Also, descriptions of your products or services. It's important, especially on your home page, to have some sort of um, text description of what it is you do. Um, also, featured products or services. So typically, a company um, focuses on or features a certain item or a certain service that it offers um, that it wants to kind of drive customers towards. So that's another good thing to feature on your home page and uh, another way of addressing this question. And then finally, testimonials from uh, current customers. Uh, that often tells people looking for a certain product or service um, that, you know, that not only is this a company that I can trust, but it's a company that offers the service or the products that I'm looking for. And I should note, too, in the website planning guide, um, we list all of this content. We list the five questions and the content that can address it. And our thought with it is you can print out the website planning guide and actually check off the content that you want to use on your site. So you can really treat it as a checklist. So anyway, getting back to the, uh, the slideshow. The second question, do I have confidence that the quality and type of products or services will meet or exceed my expectations. So um, I've identified that this company offers what I'm looking for. Um, am I confident that it's going to uh, be as good as I want it to be or better? So content that can address this question. Again, photos of your work, uh, particularly if they're good photos. That's a great way of showing people, yes, 
we not only offer this service, but we do it really well. Um, adding captions to those photos can help as well to help identify what those photos are showing. Um, descriptions as well as photos of your work. So if you add a services page to your site or a products page, you want to make sure, uh, or it's a good idea to have images for each of the different services or products that you offer. Again, testimonials, uh, particularly for this in terms of building trust and confidence in your prospective customers. Uh, when they can see that other people um, have used your service or bought your products and are happy, um, that will uh, help them build confidence in your in your company. Uh, and then finally, articles. If you have any uh, news articles about your service, uh, that's a great thing to add to your site to, again, build confidence and trust. Question number three, does this website provide enough evidence that the firm or organization has credibility? And again, this, this is related to question number two. It's about building confidence and trust um, among your prospective customers. So some content that can address this question, member association logos. So if you are a member of a particular association or organization, uh, maybe it's a professional association, it's a great idea to show, uh, to show that on your site, to include those member association logos. Um, photos of you and your staff. So that helps kind of add a human element to the site if you can show uh, the real people behind the service that you're offering. Um, related to member association logos are industry credentials or licenses. So if you have um, certain credentials, maybe you have a badge for those credentials, uh, put those on your site and that will uh, show people that um, your company meets a certain industry standard. Um, similarly, awards or honors. Um, so if you've gotten uh, an award for the work that you do uh, or any other sort of accolade, definitely promote that on your site. Particularly, again, if you have some sort of badge from the organization that gave you the award, uh, put that on your site. That That's a great way of uh, showing that you're a credible company. Again, testimonials, uh, that keeps coming up. Uh, really important to show that other people are happy with your company and the services that you offer. Um, I, I don't think there's any other better way of building trust among prospective customers than, than that. Um, and it doesn't have to just be um, uh, quotes that you add directly to your site. You can also use third-party testimonials from review sites like Yelp or yellowpages.com. That's also a great way of, um, again, showing people that you have credibility. Also providing examples of your work. So whether it's a portfolio, uh, again, a services page where you have some pictures showing the kinds of work you do, a projects page where you talk about previous projects that you've done, um, that will help build confidence and trust. And then finally, if you can add any articles that show your expertise in the particular industry or field that you work in, that'll show people that you really know what you're talking about. So it's really easy to add articles uh, to your site. So that's, again, a great way of showing that you have credibility. All right, question number four. Uh, this one's probably the most kind of straightforward. Are these products or services offered in my price range? So important if you're selling a particular service or products, important to show uh, the prices for those services or products. Now, in some cases, the price is going to differ uh, for each of the jobs that you do. So you may not want to include a price um, uh, in, in those cases. But what you can do is you can uh, clearly uh, show that you can offer a free quote or give a free estimate, and that's going to uh, get people to contact you to try and get that free quote or estimate. And then finally, question number five, what's the simplest and most effective way 
to learn more or order these products or services? How can I actually obtain what this company is offering? So content that can address this question. Definitely want your contact information. So phone number, email address. Um, you know, if there are any other channels that you use where people can contact you, whether it's Twitter or um, Skype, include that. You want to make it really easy for people to contact you. Um, similarly, and I'm sort of going out of order here, having a contact form uh, on your site is probably the best way of, of getting people to contact you. Because then it's really easy. They can stay on the website, and they just enter their name, phone number, email, type in a short message, and then you get an email from, from us saying that this person has contacted you. Uh, so contact form is, is a great way of generating leads. Having calls to action on your site is also uh, uh, really important in terms of, of generating leads. So um, some message, particularly I would say on your home page, um, encouraging people to contact you, you know, whether it's a uh, some sort of uh, promotion, you know, free uh, free estimate or 10% off through June 30th, uh, particularly when you have kind of a, a set time frame for it. That's going to help uh, motivate people to, to contact you. Uh, other ways that you can do this are um, if you're selling things on your website, if you're actually using your website as a point of purchase, having uh, e-commerce integrated, so whether it's PayPal, or Google Checkout, or another e-commerce service. Um, I mean, that actually lets people purchase what you're offering right there on the website. Um, if you are in a business where uh, your clients make appointments with you, it's definitely a good idea to have some sort of way for them to do that on your website. So there are numerous different scheduling applications uh, available on the web. Um, some have like a calendar interface. Um, others, it's like a form that people fill out where they can request an appointment at, at a certain time. So that's certainly something that you can integrate into your website. So again, those are the, the five kind of common questions that we identified that prospective customers would ask when they get to your website. So important to think about all of those in the context of your business and to think about what content could address those questions. Maybe it's different content than what I've listed here. Uh, but in any case, good idea to ask yourself these questions. What are some other content considerations? Because certainly there's, there's more to a website, or more to most websites, than what I've gone over so far. Um, other content that you might want to include on your site. Some sort of business overview. Uh, you know, showing your company name contact information, perhaps a short description um, of your business. Um, that's important. Again, it, it's an easy way of telling people who you are, what you do, and how they can contact you. Again, articles, um, both articles written by others about your company and articles that you've written about um, either your company or some aspect of the field that you work in. Listings. If you're a real estate agent, an apartment community, uh, an auto dealership, um, or if you are a service provider and you have various different kinds of services that you provide, you may want to include listings in your website. And if you use our vFlyer marketing service, it's really easy to add your vFlyer listings to your website and actually import them from your vFlyer account. Um, if you've used vFlyer sites before, you've most likely seen how easy it is to do that. And I can show you uh, how the, the listings integration works a little later on in the webinar. Uh, a Twitter feed. If you use Twitter, which a lot of small businesses do, um, it's a great idea to pull in your, your recent tweets into your site. And we've made that really easy. We have a special Twitter module. You can add to any page on your site, and so you can show your most recent you know, three tweets. And that's also a great way of keeping the content on your site fresh without actually having to update the site, because the Twitter module gets updated automatically as you add new tweets.
Video content. Um, if you have video for your company on YouTube, or if there's a particular video about some aspect of the industry that you work in that you want to include on your website, that's great. Video is becoming more and more important in um, in internet marketing generally. So if you can add video to your site, great, do it. It's going to be uh, it's going to become even bigger and bigger, uh, I think, over the next few years. And also, we I mean, we've made it really easy to add video to your site. It's basically a matter of just getting the embed code for any video, whether it's on YouTube or another online video host, and then pasting it into a video module. You can also add audio to your site. So if you want some music playing when someone gets to your site, also really easy. We have a special audio module that you can use for that. And then finally, a map. In most cases, when you build a site, um, there will be a map on the contact page uh, by, by default. So it's a good idea to show people where your business is located. Now, it's also a good idea when you're thinking about how you want to build your site. To think about the site's functionality, what it actually does, and how your site visitors will interact with it. Because that's also really important. I mentioned the importance of a contact form before in terms of um, people being able to easily get in touch with you. And particularly if your main concern is, is lead generation with your website, a contact form is great. I recommend putting a contact form on your home page in that case. And then it's going to be super easy for people to get in touch with you and also to give you their email address and phone number, and that'll help you build up your, your mailing list. Same thing with an email subscription field. Uh, we have a what's called a subscribe module that allows you to add a field to uh, any part of your site with a button that says, um, you know, subscribe. Or you can change what the button says. But it's basically a way for people to just give you their email address. And that's another great way of building up your mailing list. So you can then send them uh, newsletters and stay in touch with them. Uh, another important way of um, letting people interact with your site is through Facebook. Uh, if you have a Facebook page for your business, I definitely recommend adding a Facebook like button to your site because um, that allows people to like your page on Facebook right from your website. They don't even need to go to Facebook. They can just click the like button and it's done. And you also have some options. You can show um, pictures of or, or the faces of other people who already like your page. You can also show your Facebook news stream. Um, E-commerce is another great way of adding functionality to your site. So again, I mentioned PayPal, Google Checkout. Uh, there are numerous other e-commerce applications out there. And again, if your main purpose or one of your purposes is actually making um, the site a point of purchase for your customers, definitely it's a good idea to add those e-commerce features to the site. And that can easily be done, um, at least you know, with PayPal and Google Checkout, you can get a snippet of um, HTML or JavaScript code. All you need to do is copy that code and then paste it into um, your site. And I'll, again, I'll show you how you can do that a little later on in the training. Uh, social media toolbar, also another kind of social media uh, integration feature. This allows you to add icons for different social media sites uh, to your website, and then you can link each of those icons to your page on that social media site. So you can have a, an icon for Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Yelp, LinkedIn, several other sites. And you can link to your pages on each of those separate sites. So that's a great way of um, kind of channeling people towards your social media presence right from your site. Um, I mentioned audio content. That's kind of another functionality feature. Um, links to resources. So I don't know if this is really functionality or content. But in any case, it's really easy to add links to other sites. And there may be other sites that you want to direct people to. So it's it's a good idea in those cases to add some links to those sites. 
to your own website. And then finally, a map. And that's, again, sort of content slash functionality. Um, but people can actually see where you're located and can potentially get directions to how to get there. So those are just a few of the kind of functional aspects that you might want to incorporate in your site. Certainly not an exhaustive list. And there is a plethora of um, widgets and other applications out there uh, that, for the most part, you can easily integrate into your vFlyer website. Now, one thing we haven't talked much about yet is, is images. And images are really important. Um, and I think one of the common mistakes um, that I see in, in people who built their own website is um, not enough images or images that just you know aren't quite sized right. Um, you know, a good image can really make a web page. And I would say um, a lack of images or the use of images that aren't so good can have the opposite effect. So really important to uh, use images and make sure that the images look good on the page. So you can see here in this slide, we've got three different images. At the top, below the header, we've got what we call a splash image. So that's an image that covers the width of the, the site frame. And typically, that should be an image that relates to the, the business, either the, the service offered or the products offered. So in this case, we have a salon site. So we have a splash image that is related to hair and, and beauty. And below that, below the, the kind of overview text and the promotions text, we've got a couple of what I call supporting images. So again, these are photos that are related to the business. And these actually show, well, in one case, it shows the interior of the salon. And then in another case, it shows uh, a, a hairstylist. So I think having a good balance of text and images is one of the most important considerations in kind of designing and structuring your site. So again, if you're drawing out or sketching out what you want your site to look like, think about that. Think about how you can balance images and, and other media, whether it's video or a slideshow, and text. Now, how can you get images? So if, if we accept that having images on your site is a good idea, how do you actually get them if you don't already have them? Um, well, one way you can do that is you can take them on your own camera. So if you have a camera, that's probably the, the cheapest and easiest option to get those images. I would recommend that you use a, uh, a, a DSLR, a digital camera, preferably with a flash. That's going to give you the best, clearest image. And I think it's also important to stage your shots well. And, and by that, I mean make sure that they're well lit, that it's clear what the photos show. Um, if you're taking a picture of an interior space, you know, clean it up, make it look nice before you take the picture. And that's going to um, really make the picture and your web page look more impressive and, and inviting. If you don't have a camera or you would rather kind of leave it to a professional, you can always hire a photographer to take some really high quality photos of, of you, your staff, your business, your your office, um, whatever it is that you want to show on your site. If you want to have some pictures of your team out on a job, you can hire a photographer to do that. That's going to give you um, most likely really high quality photos. It, of course, costs more than just taking the photos yourself. Another option um, is to buy licenses to stock images. So there are numerous websites out there that sell uh, royalty-free stock images or sell licenses to use those images. So some of those sites include Photolia.com. That's one that we use a lot. iStockphoto, uh, Masterfile, and Getty Images. So those are four uh, pretty big royalty-free image sites. The benefit of that is uh, you can find a stock image for just about anything. I mean, there are just tons of them out there. Um, so, you know, any any kind of business, you can most likely find a, a stock image to use for it. And 
they're relatively affordable. I mean, you can typically buy a, a license to uh, a stock image that you could use for, you know, somewhere between ten and twenty-five dollars, depending on the the um, the site and the the image. It could be more than that, um, but usually they're they're fairly affordable. So those are just a few ways that you can get images. If you're having any trouble uh, finding images, um, you can always contact the vFlyer team and, and we can offer some suggestions. We may even have some stock images that um, we might be able to, to lend you for your site. Now the header. The header is also an important element because um, that's probably the first thing that people on will see on your website. Usually it's at the top of the site. Usually it shows your logo or your company name, uh, your phone number, so it's pretty prominent. Uh, now you have a few different options with the header. So um, if you want a, just a very simple basic header that shows your business or company name, a slogan, a phone number, then I recommend using the default content template. And when you create your site, that's, that's what you get. So you enter your business name, you enter a phone number, um, maybe you enter a slogan. And so the default content template is what then appears in the site editor. Now if you want a little more flexibility, if you want a header that shows some other content besides just the name, the slogan, the phone number, or that combines text and images, let's say you want to show your company name as well as a logo. Then I recommend that you try the WYSIWYG editor. And that'll give you some more flexibility. That's kind of like opening up Microsoft Word and typing in a doc. Um, it's basically a blank canvas that you can use. And you, again, it gives you more flexibility with things like font and font color and size. And it also lets you, excuse me, combine text and images. And then finally, the third option is to uh, show a banner image as your header. Um, so if you, let's say you already have kind of a banner that you want to show at the top of your site, you can upload that in the header image section. Um, if you're going to do that, I recommend that the banner image be at least a thousand pixels wide and at least a hundred pixels tall. Um, and that's going to give you the best, clearest resolution for that banner image. If it's narrower than a hundred, or Excuse me. If it's narrower than a thousand pixels, the system's going to automatically resize it to stretch across the entire uh, width of the website, and so it's going to lose some resolution that way. And I'm actually going to jump over to my browser here, and let me actually get to another site. Just bear with me for one second. Demo account. Okay. There we go. All right, let me get to a site that I've already created. And I just want to show you how you can access these different header options. So I'm going to mouse over the header module, click Edit Header Content. And you can see these three options at the top of this window here. So if I want to just use the default content template, again, that's the default. So that's what I get automatically. It's got a company name, slogan, and phone number. And so this is what that looks like. So again, pretty basic. If you just want, again, a very basic header, I recommend using this one. The WYSIWYG editor, again, gives you a little more flexibility. So if I click this WYSIWYG editor tab, and by the way, WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. So that's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here what I mean by it being a blank canvas. So I can type in any text that I want. I can change the font. And I can change the size to whatever I want. And I can change the color. All right, so I've got a nice red company name here. So you can see that now. So 
again, I have a little more flexibility here. If I wanted to add a, a logo image or any other image, I can just upload it easily. So that's the WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG editor, excuse me. And then if I click the banner image tab, you can see I already uploaded a banner image here. So I'm just going to click Save and Close. And now I'm back to the, the image that I had here originally. So you can see this whole thing is just one image. Um, I would say for the best presentation, a good banner image um, can't be beat. Uh, that's going to give you uh, typically a, a really nice professional look. Um, if you're interested in having a banner image, but you either don't have one already uh, or, or don't have the time or the tools to create one, contact us and uh, contact vFlyer and we can create uh, a header image for you. We can even design a full site for you if you want. Um, so that option is available. And we'll, we'll charge a, a one-time fee. It's typically a $499 fee for a full site. Um, but definitely contact us, and we can help you with that. So that's the basics of setting up your header. So again, think about, as you're figuring out how you want to build your site, think about what kind of header you want. And then once you've decided that, it'll be easy to go ahead and create it or have it created for you. Now, the, the, I would say the final consideration in thinking about how you want your site, how you want to build your site, is the website design. Also really important, it determines the overall look and feel of the site. So in thinking about the design, think about whether you want to use an existing vFlyer site theme. So when you're building your site, I'll show you from the site editor how you can switch themes. Let's see if I can find a different theme. So the theme is basically just the, the design, the colors, the fonts, you know, the overall look of the site. So you can use any uh, standard uh, vFlyer sites theme on your site. Um, you can also customize an existing theme. So you choose a theme, you then have the option to change just about all of the design aspects of it. So you can change the colors, you can add a new background image. Um, so that's a great way of making your site really unique. The other option is to have a custom design created for you by vFlyer. Again, I mentioned that we offer uh, site design services, or by an independent designer. So if you want to build your site with vFlyer sites, you want a custom design, but you don't want to build it yourself, you can hire out a designer in your area, um, have them actually design the site in vFlyer sites. And then once that's done, you'll be able to manage the site going forward. So those are, are other options. You know, the first two options, again, are, are um, well, if we go through each option, the first to use just an existing vFlyer site theme, that's the easiest, takes, you know, basically no work from, from you, um, you know, but it's, it's not going to be a particularly unique site theme. You may have other sites that use that same site theme. So that's one drawback. Um, the second option, customizing an existing theme. Again, you don't have to pay any extra for that, but it does require uh, some some more time and some more work by you um, because you're manually changing the colors and fonts and any other design attribute of that theme. But you're going to get a more unique looking site, uh, which is really valuable. And then the final option um, is the one that will give you the most unique looking site and probably the best branded site. But there's an additional cost to it. So, you know, weigh those those benefits and drawbacks and then decide which approach is going to work best for you. And just to show you, I'm going to exit this. Go back to my old theme. 
If you want to just make basic edits to your theme, just click the Settings tab in the upper right corner, and then click Edit Theme. And that will open up the Theme Editor at the bottom of the page. And so you can change, again, font. Um, you can click through the different tabs on the left side of the page or different parts of the site. So if you want to change aspects of the header, you can do that here. So anyway, once you've made your changes, just click Save and Close. We also have an advanced theme editor. So if you know some CSS and really want to um, get more control over the, the full design of your site, you can go into the advanced theme editor and make some, some more kind of granular changes there. Now once you've compiled some content and have an outline for your site, start building it. You know, don't wait. Uh, just get going. You, you actually can start building your site before you even have all the content compiled. Because uh, the nice thing is you can always go back and make edits, make changes. And one thing to remember is that you don't need to finish your website before you publish it. In fact, uh, a website is never really finished, or it never should be finished. Um, it's something that should continually be updated and, and changed and, and worked on. But it's better to get a good-looking site out there with at least the essential content that you need on it, um, and then update and add content as needed. You know, if, if you don't have content for all of the pages on your site, you can always add a note. Uh, something like coming soon or under construction to uh, any of those pages. You know, important to have your home page set up and maybe, you know, the contact page and the services page. But some of the other secondary pages, those are less important, and I wouldn't hold off on publishing your site until you have those pages finished. Okay. All right, so that about covers all of the content that I wanted to go over today and that we included in the website planning guide. Uh, but just to summarize kind of the most important points. Number one, use the website planning guide as a checklist for the content that you'll need for your site. Or if you want, create your own checklist. But in any case, having that checklist will help you figure out what content you want on your site and will help you start to organize and collect it. Uh, number two, ask yourself those five questions that your website visitors will most likely ask. And think about maybe any other questions that your site visitors might ask. Because again, for each business, those questions might be a little different. But the, the point is try and put yourself uh, in the shoes of your website visitors. Number three, Sketch out how you want your website to look. Um, this is going to make building the site easier, I think. Um, again, I, I have some trouble usually if I'm in front of a computer screen figuring out uh, how I actually want the site to look. I get caught up in um, sort of the, the technical aspects of it. If I just have a blank sheet of paper and a pencil, I can more easily um, just do a quick sketch of how I want the page to look. So I think that's really helpful. And then four, determine which contents of the site you'll create yourself and which you'll have someone else do for you. So again, if you uh, don't have good photos or good images to put on your site, um, look into either licensing them from one of those stock image sites that I mentioned or hiring a photographer to take some good images for you. Um, if you want a header image, but you don't have one and can't create one or don't want to create one, contact vFlyer or hire a designer to create one for you. So figuring out uh, which content you'll be able to compile or create yourself and which you'll need help with, that's going to help you, again, sort of um, structure your site and figure out how to build it. So those are four important things, again, to think about as you're planning your site. And again, use the, the website planning guide as, um, as a checklist for uh, preparing your site.
So that, again, does it for what I wanted to go over today. Um, I know we went over a lot of content. It was rather uh, quick. Uh, we went at kind of a brisk pace. But at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has, um, whether it's about something that I went over today or any other aspect of vFlyer sites or of building a website generally. So again, you can type in questions in the questions field of your control panel. And actually, as we're as we're waiting on that, let me show you how you can integrate listings uh, into your site. Because I mentioned that I would show you that before. So if I add a listings page, so now I have a listings page. Hopefully, this account has some some flyers. Actually, let me check. Okay, yeah, we've got some flyers. So I'm going to go back to my site. Go to my listings page. And so if you use our vFlyer marketing service, which you can create flyers with and post them all over the web, you can integrate those flyers or those listings into your website really easily. So I'm going to add a listings module to this listings page that I just set up. So on the Add Module screen, under Integration, you'll find a Listings button. So select that, click Next, and then you can choose which listings, uh, which category of listings you want to pull from, the default order of those listings, um, and some other kind of settings. So I'm going to save and add to the site. All right, so I have four flyers in this account, four published flyers. So they all appear in my listings module. And I can click through to any one of them and see the details for that listing. So again, it's all being pulled from my vFlyer marketing account. And if I were to add a new flyer and publish it or unpublish or delete one of these flyers, those changes would automatically be reflected on my website. I don't need to make any updates on this, which is really nice. I always like things that update automatically. So that's the, the basic listing integration. We've got a couple other listing modules that you can use. Um, one that shows just featured listings from your account. Another that shows um, what's called a mini listings module. So you can use that to show your listings in a, a sidebar of your site. Okay, so again, any questions? All right, well, if no one has any questions, that's fine. Uh, if you do think of any questions after the webinar or as you're building your site, definitely don't hesitate to contact our support team. You can email us at support at vflyer.com. You can call our 800 number. Also take a look at our online help center, vflyer.zendesk.com. Um, I think there's a, a link to the help center at the top of every page of our site. That's got a lot of great information uh, as well. Um, but I hope that after today's webinar, you have a better sense of how you can approach building your own website, what content you might want to include in your site. But again, if you would like some more help or want to bounce some ideas off uh, someone who's built a lot of websites, feel free to contact us. You can ask for Dan, that's me, and I'll be happy to, to talk with you and give you some ideas or feedback or answer any questions that you have. All right, well, thanks again, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon, and happy site building. Take care.